But by being rebellious to tithes and offerings, we bring a curse on ourselves. Does everybody get it? It's amazing how many people get an inheritance <laughs> and they just put it away and are going to save it for a rainy day. They're going to collect interest off us, do this, do that, but never tithe off of it. They don't even realize that there's already a curse there. I've seen so many people lose so much money because they got an inheritance and never tithe off of it. And they end up losing that whole inheritance because they're so, they get more and more in debt, everything else, because no matter what they do, won't prosper. Just can't. Because that's what the Lord says. He tells us in Malachi chapter 3, why would, why would you rob me of tithes and offerings? You are cursed. And if God puts a curse on you, believe me, it's there. That means the devil is like all of hell is going, hallelujah. <laughs> I think that's the only time that the all of hell, hallelujah is God, is when, when the Lord puts a curse on somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 16, let's read it together. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain what? Advantage. You know, it's difficult for some individuals, especially if they're in telemarketing. You got to be careful. You got to tell the truth and trust God. Because God is on the line with you. <laughs> the phone has been tapped <laughs> by the throne room of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they, would, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the Spirit or not submitting to the Spirit because they are bewitched. Amen? Praise God. 2 Timothy 3. Oh, glory. Almost done here. Hang tough. 2 Timothy chapter 3. So the first thing about overcoming witchcraft, right, is to know that it's there. You can't overcome something you don't know. The second area of overcoming witchcraft is to submit. Submit to God's kingdom of rule, government, and authority so that you can resist the devil and discern. Amen? Is everybody okay? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. Wow. False religion. Bewitched. Cursed. But denying its power from such people, stay away. For this sort, those are who are creeping to households, ministries, businesses, and make captives of gullible men and women, load them down with sins led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, not able to submit to the truth because they can't submit to kingdom rule, government, and authority. So the truth cannot be practiced or manifested in their life. That's why they never get free. They have a sense of always learning, 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 but never broke through. Why? Because they're unstable. Hello? And what I mean by unstable, you don't know what they're going to do. When they say they're going to do something, you don't know. They're unaccountable. Did you ever go to, you ever been at work and you see a person show up and then they don't show up for two days and then they show up and then, you know, 
I mean, they're like, they're inconsistent. If an individual is inconsistent, there is a curse somewhere. There is a bewitchment. Because an individual should be consistent in what God is telling them to do. They are consistent. Consistency is a fruit of faithfulness. Because an individual who is consistent is faithful. Amen? And that person will learn and overcome and walk in truth. There are people who are constantly learning and never able to walk in the truth because they're inconsistent. They pray twice a week. Or they have a form of religion. They say, good morning, God. Thank you for this day. I'm going to work. Plus my socks off. Amen. Don't work that way. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. Not seek what's added to you and then later look for the kingdom. Don't work that way. Amen. <laughs> Psalm 1. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm 1, verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So what about the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly? They're cursed. Now the counsel of the ungodly is going to bring a curse, and there's witchcraft behind it. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. All that's going to bring a curse of anyone that does this. But whoever doesn't do this will bring blessing. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. In other words, he's seeking the kingdom. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruits in its seasons, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. But for the ungodly are not so. But are like the chaff which the wind drives away, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. The third thing that we must constantly do is expose it. Because if you can't, if you're not willing to expose it, it will overcome you. So there's three, there's, I just want to share with you that there's three major things that we must do to overcome witchcraft. Number one is to understand it and know that it's there, what it is. Number two is to constantly submit to kingdom, rule, government, and authority so that you can resist the devil and discern. And number three is to expose it. Does everybody got it? We are to expose it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Titus 1. Titus. Glory. It's under the T's. Titus chapter 1, verse 10. 